and because I was in upstate New York, um, driving through the mountains and around the lakes, uh, I was pretty much like, so I'm, I'm about, um, uh, maybe three or four hours into this drive. I would say at least half of that has been in dead zones, like absolutely no service. Like there is no cellular service at all. Right. Um, and look, it's not a big deal. I've been through parts of the country where there, uh, there's no cell phone service, but, but not for like an hour consec, like consecutively for an hour. That's crazy to me. Like hundreds of miles where there's no cell service and it's just service dead zones. It's, it just said no service on my phone. So I couldn't get calls. I couldn't get uh, messages or emails or anything, but it had me thinking like the people in this, in these towns also probably don't have self service or if they do, it's spotty at best. Um, because I doubt like municipal broadband or any sort of like small, you know, small internet service is in those small towns. Right. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm making a little bit of a generalization. I might be wrong. If I am wrong, feel free to correct me and leave, leave a comment. I'm, I'm not, you know, opposed to having a discussion about it. Um, but I, but for my understanding is like, I, I very much doubt that there is a, there is a small ISP of some kind providing, you know, fiber to the, to the town of Russia, real place, um, or Hickenborough or whatever is in upstate New York. Right. Like I, I very much doubt like that's going to happen. So, uh, I was thinking, like, so how do these people get information? Like, I remember being in the town um, of, uh, I believe it was Colfax, Iowa. Uh, something along those lines. Very small town, about 35 minutes outside Des Moines, Iowa. And it was legitimately the slowest internet that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Uh, like, a, like, I was uploading a video to my YouTube page. And, uh, uh, like, you know, like a two, three minute clip that would normally at at, in Pittsburgh, take about, you know, five minutes maybe to upload, uh, was going to take about three and a half hours. And I was just like, this is crazy. And I got, and I started getting like really upset because I was like, I want my fucking internet. <laughs> right. Cause that's what we do. Right. Like what we're done. Like, I, I need it. What if, what if, what if I miss a tweet? Well, if I can't get, get my hot take on a fucking tweet. Right. Like, and I got to that point, but then I also had to think like, Dude, this is this is their these people's reality like every day like every day they have to deal with very slow internet and it was like even web pages weren't loading as uh, as fast right like Fox News or CNN or whatever like even that's not loading very quickly Facebook wasn't loading very quickly so how do these people get information uh, and to me the, my thought was like they have to turn to their cable news networks or their or the written word. Right. So like journalism in these cities is kind of important because because that's how they formulate their opinions. That's how they re see what is happening in the outside world. Right. Because people like I'm, like I'm not going and hanging out in this small town in, in upstate New York. You know what I mean? I should. I probably should. I should probably go up there and like talk to people. And I would love to do that if I had uh, time and the resources to do it. That would be a super fucking cool like um you know, uh, like sociological uh, research thing, right? Like just to go and see like, what do people do in these small towns? How do they get information? How are they forming their opinions? How is, um, how is news spreading around? Uh, and I know there's some people that have done it. I know there's like sociologists and stuff that have, that have done it, but it, it does prove, like it does show to me like how important journalism really is and why it's turned into the propaganda mouthpiece of the establishment and the intelligence communities that it has, right? Like MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, they're all fucking propaganda machines. That's all they are. They're just pumping out this, you know, divisive rhetoric nonstop all the time. Um, and, that, and that's what they're doing. And the, and the primary places where people, that, like, people are solely tuning in to get information from these areas, from these networks, is in these small towns in like upstate New York, Colfax, Iowa, um, you know, like the middle of the country that might not have great internet coverage, uh, that might not have a lot of tourism, uh, influx of people, and, and people from their towns aren't really going out 
to the big city all the time or to go to on vacation and everything. They're very working class. They're kind of stuck in that labor thing, right? So it's like even being in these no service zones, I was I just had to like think about all of that stuff. Um, so it's so interesting to me. It's like I forget about that. And, and, you know, like in the moment, I was getting heated and upset where I was just like, really? It's been 45 fucking minutes and there's no service? There's no service here? How dare they? How dare they take my Twitter away from me? <laughs> but, but in reality, what we should be upset about is really? These people don't have legitimate access to, to, to uh, unbiased news or even if it's biased, both sides of the bias? Like, they don't get that sort of information. They have to rely on, on their cable news channels, which are owned by a large media corporation. Like, that's not okay. So, it just made me think about, uh, you know, think about that. Which is good, because I, I literally had nothing else to do. I couldn't listen to Spotify or my podcast or anything. Uh, so, so it was like, I just, I just had myself. Uh, and, you know, once you start, once you stop getting all yelly in your brain you start thinking about like oh wow like this is crazy that this uh this is hey. by the way once i did get service like i was getting like after i'd been in this no services uh area for a while the uh, uh there was an ad that came up that was like oh imagine that you're listening to your favorite podcast of all time and it's the crime podcast and they're about to reveal who the killer is and then your service dies what are you gonna do what are you gonna do? It's like, wait, just fucking give it a minute. You're probably not in an area where you can access any social media, any news, any messages, or any phone calls, right? Like, you're either in a mystery show yourself, or you can just fucking wait till you get service and find out who killed that person. It's not like anybody can spoil it for you. You don't have any of the things that spoil things for you. It was just kind of funny uh, that, uh, that, that that was there. I did, uh, I did drive uh, past the town of Russia, which means uh, we found it, guys. We found where the collusion was happening. It was, they're, they're infil- they're, it's all right, we've already been infiltrated, and they're not even hiding about it. I bet that whole thing is just a meme farm that took down the election. That's where all the memes were generated. That's where Rachel Maddow's sanity is now. That's where she's at. Why is nobody helping Rachel Maddow? Uh, somebody should go into the town of Russia and say, hello, we would, uh, like to get Rachel Maddow's mental health stability back and return it to her so that she can think logically and not hyper-reactively, uh, and send the country into a, a new state of McCarthyism, which even Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower said wouldn't be a good idea. Um, it's just like we're not, it's, we're not going to address the fact that uh, Interstate Crosscheck kicks a million voters uh, off of uh, off the ballots. We're not going to talk about gerrymandering. We're not going to talk about how the DNC legitimately stole the election from Bernie Sanders and then probably leveraged his position in office to make him support Hillary Clinton. Or, or the fact that Cambridge Analytica, which was a British corporation uh, funded by an American billionaire, uh, put out very uh, manipulative ads on Facebook. We're not gonna talk about that. That's we're just gonna we're just gonna Russia get it. Fine, if that's what we're gonna do. I found it, guys. I found the concentration of Russia Gate. It's the town of Russia, population eight, upstate New York. There's no internet there, but somehow they fucking did it. They they made those memes, and then they and then they mailed it out to people. And, the, and then through the mail, uh, the, the, the Postal Service was able to digitize it, get it up on the Internet. Oh, there's, they're tricky up there in the Russia, in the town of Russia. Oh, they're tricky. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Krishmohan, ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy 
all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.